Scientific notation is a shorthand way of representing very large and very small numbers. For example, this number here is four and a half trillion is a rather large number and can be represented in this way with scientific notation. So basically a much smaller, more convenient way of dealing with a large number such as this, or even a small number like this, this is a decimal number, this can be represented in scientific notation as 9.3 times 10 to the power of minus 10. So the question is, how do we actually uh, arrive at these numbers? So the first thing you need to do is figure out what the exponent is going to be here. Um, and you do that by counting the number of digits after the first digit. So in this case, the first digit is 4. So after this, we have 12 digits. If you count all these, it adds up to 12. So this is how we arrive at this number here. And the number here, 10, is always going to be the same. It's always going to have a base of 10. Um, now, to find out the coefficient here, the 4.5, we look at the first digit, which is 4. We put a decimal point after the first digit. And then we include all the all the whole numbers until the whole numbers run out, basically. So you can see here the whole numbers finish here. So the trailing zeros you don't have to include in the number. So we just simply write... 4.5. Now I've explained to you the technique in working this out, but it's also important to really understand why this is correct. And this is correct because 10 to the power of 12 is 10 by 10 by 10, and you continue on doing that 12 times. So that actually, if you look that look that up in your calculator, it gives you 1 trillion. So 4.5 times 1 trillion actually gives you four and a half trillion. So you can see it makes sense, but obviously this is a much easier n number to, to work with than, than this with. Th this is, and also remember, we can even have much bigger numbers than this uh, to deal with. So we need a, a, an easy way to deal with such, such large numbers. Now let's have a look at this number here. Now, this is not the kind of number you would use scientific notation norm normally to, to represent because, you know, it, there's no advantage in writing it in this form because this is a relatively small number. But maybe in a problem you might be asked to do this, so uh, it's good to test your knowledge of how to do it. So again, we're going to use the same method. We're going to count the digits after the first digit, so there's 3. So that means it's going to be multiplied by 10 to the power of 3. And to get the coefficient of this number, we need to uh, put a decimal point after the first digit here. So we're going to end up with 1.534. So now let's have a look at uh, dealing with decimal numbers. The method we're going to use here is going to be slightly different. Right, first of all, we need to figure out what the coefficient is. So let's work out the coefficient by, uh, instead of putting a decimal point after the first digit, what we do is we look for the first non-zero number after the decimal place, which would in this case be 4, and then we put the decimal point after the 4. So we end up with 4.5 as the coefficient. Now to work out what the power should be, we need, or the exponent here, we need to count the number of digits to the left of where the decimal point now is. So the decimal point is now after 4, so to the left of that we have 2 digits until we reach the, dec the other decimal point. So it's, it's the number of digits between the new decimal point and the old dec decimal point. So there's 2, so that means this number here is going to be minus 2. It's always minus for decimal numbers. So now let's look at this uh, last number here. Uh, here we have a very long decimal number. Uh, again, we look for the first non-zero whole number, which is here, and we put a decimal point after 9, which gives us the 9.3 that we have here. Then we ask ourselves, how many, how many places to the left of the decimal point here do we have? Between this decimal point and this decimal point, there's 10 digits. So this is where we get the minus 10 here. 
And remember, with all of these coefficients, the numbers have to be between 1 and 10. So if you're getting a number that's outside of that range, you know you've got something wrong, you've done something wrong. So you can see all of these numbers are between 1 and 10. Okay, so let's have a look at how we do the reverse, how we convert from scientific notation into standard notation. How would we convert this number, for example, into a regular number? Uh, what we do is, we, well, we know that this is the first digit, and we know that there's going to be three digits after the first digit, even though we only see two here. So we're going to have to put on an extra zero, and the number will be, of course, 2,630. So, in other words, that's the same as saying 2.63 times 1,000, because 10 to the power of 3 is 1,000. Um, if we look at the next one, uh, it's 2.45 times 10 to the power of minus 3. So, we said that means that there's going to be three digits between here and the, the, the decimal point. So, there's one digit that we can see, so we're going to have to put in a 0 and a 0 and put the decimal point here. So that's going to give us, it's going to give us 0 0.00245. So we moved the decimal point from here three places to the left. So the minus means we move three places to the left, and the plus exponent means we move three places to the right. So let's have a look at another example, 8 times 10 to the power of 4, that's a positive exponent, so that means we're moving the decimal place from here, 4 places to the right, which will leave us with 80,000. In other words, the 4 places to the right of the 8 have to be filled in with zeros. Now I haven't put in the decimal point here, but remember the decimal point was after the 8, now it's moved to this position here. So if, if you don't put a C a decimal point, you assume it's at the end of the number. So let's have a look at the last example. Uh, here we have a 10 to the power of minus 3, so that means we're moving the decimal point 3 places to the left. So we're going to have to put in two zeros here, and it's going to end up being 0 0.003445. So now let's have a look at how we add uh, numbers that are in scientific notation. If you take the first example here, it says 2 times 10 to the power of 4 plus 4 times 10 to the power of 4. Now this is pretty easy to do because the 10s here have the same exponent. So 4 is the exponent of 10 here and 4 is the exponent of 10 here. When you have that situation, pretty easy to add them. It's just basically you add the numbers here. So 2 times 2 plus 4 gives you 6, so you end up with 6 times 10 to the power of 4. Similarly, if you subtract uh, numbers in scientific notation, again it's important that the exponents are the same. If they are, then it's fairly straightforward. You just take these two numbers, so 6 minus 2 is 4, so we're left with 4 times 10 to the power of 3. Okay, so what happens when the exponents are different? Well, if that happens, then you need to make sure that they are the same. So you've got to either adjust this one or adjust this one. It doesn't really matter which. So let's just say we keep this as it is, and we're going to try and adjust this one. Okay, so this remains the same, but we've got to figure out what goes in here. We're going to increase this number here from 3 to 4. So if we increase this number, then we're going to have to correspondingly decrease this number. So the, no, the decimal point for this number is actually just after the 2. So the way to de decrease it is by bringing it 1 to the left. So you're left with 0 0.2. And now that the exponents are the same, we simply add the two numbers here. So 1.7 and 0 0.2 to get 1.9. So our answer is going to be 1.9 times 10 to the power of 4. So finally, let's take a slightly more complex example. So we have 1.3 times 10 to the power of 4 minus 2 times 10 to the power of 3 plus 0 0.05 times 10 to the power of 4. Now, again, we have to make sure that the exponents are all the same. So these, these guys match up, but this one is out of sync. 
So we need to change this to 10 to the power of 4. And remember, when we, when we increase this to 4, then we're going to correspondingly decrease this by bringing the decimal point one place to the left to give us 0 0.2. So you can see this term remains the same. Um, as does this one, we just have to change this one. We increase the 3 to 4, that means we correspondingly decrease the 2 to 0 0.2. So we move the decimal place one to the left. So because all of the exponents are the same, we need to only concern ourselves now with adding and subtracting the coefficients. These guys are the coefficients. So first of all, we're going to subtract 0.2 from 1.3, so that's going to give us 1.1. And then we add on the 0 0.05 to give us 1.15, which gives us a final answer of 1.15 times 10 to the power of 4.